And when Soviet Union collapsed, then Fernand Berdel became very close to Marxism and economic ma mainstream uh, moved to an abst abstract uh, uh, field and most of the mathematicians now using algebra uh, formulas to calculate some uh, uh, mathematician uh, formulas in economics. So uh, that Jeff was talking about it. So when you have um, uh, artillery, so you have to use it. Or if you have uh, coal, so you you will uh, use it and. And when I'm asked what uh, is my, what the nature of my profession as a sociologist, and so we we do our uh, work um, uh, which is related to elections, but uh, the uh, old version of sociology uh, goes back to Max Weber, Adam Smith, and and they. Uh, argued and discussed and they uh, tried to find the answer to the question why capitalism uh, uh, won in Western European countries and not in China. So, And the simple uh, explanation could be that the cultural difference, because of the cultural difference, and the, uh, they, they could not have the same uh, judicial system as in uh, Great Britain and human rights. And when we uh, looked closely to, a, 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 to the economic system of uh, China, we found out that they were respecting private property and they had some, uh, some developed economic uh, uh, progress and and in China they were very uh, so very developed and they invented uh, lots of uh, powder for example so lots of other um, inventions that they uh, utilized in military industries and there are some inventions uh, made by Persians and but they were in a more complicated geographical situation there were some uh, they were conquered by different uh, tribes and Europe was in better conditions and Europe uh, was kind of isolated within the Europe. There were some uh, tribes um, uh, like Vikings and Mongols were too far and they couldn't get to the re they couldn't reach to the European countries. And another advantage, a geographical advantage, was the uh, Atlantic Ocean that uh, on the end of uh, which there was two. Uh, um, very beneficial countries like United States and big territories and other tribes had no access to it. One thing that I would like to mention with respect to United States, not only um, resources were going to United States, but the labor uh, in forms of um, settlements, in forms of uh, military could be used to United States. It helped the uh, Great Britain, France, uh, and uh, labor was quite uh, expensive in Europe, and they could uh, escape the United States, and soldiers had to be paid because they had to uh, uh, fight. And uh, on the wage of uh, military servicemen in the United States, he could buy some books, some bread, some meat, some uh, uh, glass of beer, and he could uh, support his family that he could not have done in Europe. And it was uh, beneficial also in that circumstances to buy very expensive machinery to install, they could have done it uh, in the United States, they could have afforded it. So in China, they could have, of course, sent 10,000 uh, miners to uh, coal minings, but um, discussions uh, seized on uh, economic theory and they measured this uh, now modern measurements uh, based on mathematics and algebra formulas and if you look at 
the um, uh, Great Britain taxation of Netherlands and Great Britain in 18th, 19th century, you can see the uh, very uh, devastating picture. And um, I would like to focus on um, on our part of the world, and it's quite uh, massive. Uh, you can see that from one side there's a gigantic China, and which is uh, and the the mystery is why China is not integrated in in the, with the entire world. And I can also uh, um, tell you about the. The, my opinion about the Turkey, there, which is a very uh, uh, important uh, trade uh, uh, partner. Uh, Iran is Pahan, and uh, so they also were coming back on market. Uh, so they were utilizing all their traditional trade uh, tools and uh, uh, so they were coming on the marking, and demography played a significant role. Where we saw uh, expansion and increase of uh, cities, so if people couldn't survive in the rural areas, they had to go to cities in urban uh, areas, and what could they do? They could somehow find some uh, bread to survive. They could have uh, uh, steal something, but it, it's, it was easy to do it. Um, in this context, where we see Russia, so on the, on the north and where Georgia was, somewhere nearby, so, and uh, Turkey was, uh, not in a uh, beneficial geographical um, uh, position to uh, conquer part of the Russia, and Russia uh, managed to um, uh, uh, produce its first uh, um, uh, firearm, and the first uh, military troop were Yanichars, and it's, uh, the origin of this word comes from the Turkish. Uh, uh, and the, even Oprichnina and other military or paramilitary units uh, were based on uh, all traditional uh, Turkish type organization of uh, military and economy. And Russians were um, in a beneficial uh, geographical situation and they had uh, nearby uh, Siberia, Pavolgia, and they went through uh, to the opposite direction. Uh, they went through the way in which uh, other conquerors were coming to Russia. So, so they got to the uh, China, and uh, so uh, and uh, gradually they came close to the North Caucasus, and uh, uh, there came uh, uh, Peter the First, Peter the Great, who was like two maybe two generation behind the Western developed economies, and. Turkey um, uh, parallelly were developing also. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, always uh, winning victory and uh, is prone to change. And Russians were conquered uh, when there were some uh, um, turmoils in Moscow in the 17th or 16th century. Uh, Moscow was occupied by um, Swedish army and Russians were uh, humiliated and Turks were not humiliated. So uh, Turks were conquered by Islamic armies and, and uh, there were m more um, uh, kind of safe in a ideological humiliation and they were always told that you have to be on the front, uh, front the uh, far front of the Islam, and so, uh, and in this context, uh, um, in order to um, sustain military, you need taxation, and uh, Russians managed to, to uh, impose uh, tax collection and taxation in order to uh, 
to maintain good uh, military and it started in uh, uh, during the uh, Peter the Great and uh, Russia and Turkey had uh, 16 wars between each other. The Turkey was much stronger with, than Iran and Russians had only one uh, military campaign with uh, Iran and Turkey were always uh, managed to um, recuperate and they um, uh, always managed to get on their feet and were back to fight with Russians and so Russia, Turkey's uh, Ataturk's empire collapsed in 18th century and uh, uh, in Russia so it was ran, Turkey was ran by um, uh, f uh, military who read in French and who read and used French language and the uh, Russian military elite was using German language and uh, both they were trying um, to develop the economic um, economies separately and in isolation and Russia is very interesting in that uh, context. In 50, 50s, for example, if we can travel to time and we can ask experts of that time, what was the most uh, important thing in that uh, at that time? Of course, they would have said uh, um, reconstruction of the empire. So reconstruction of uh, uh, of uh, empires in China and in uh, Turkey and in Europe, uh, great Gobsburgs when came, they uh, with um, had the help of Inquisition and with all the silver that they. Uh, uh, looted in United States, and if you look at this map, the b largest European uh, country of Europe was Spain. It included um, uh, 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 Portuguese, Portugal, uh, Czechia, Italy, and the, uh, another biggest uh, country was P Poland, from uh, Black Sea to Caspian Sea. And look at the um, many small independent countries, ba like Bavaria and uh, Burgundia, like they preserved their names uh, as names of uh, cheese or. Um, Wine. So there were about 600 uh, independent uh, countries, but uh, then they became to um, um, unite. And so, what, what, what were the expenses of military equipment? So, if you, um, so if we estimate uh, the um, value of. Uh, uh, military equipment of Georgian uh, prince, local prince, uh, was uh, equal to 1,500 cows or cattle. So he was very well equipped with a sword, with very, um, with other uh, uh, military equipment, and uh, all this. Uh, uh, rifles that were produced in Caucasus, they were very highly valued. Each uh, uh, rifle costed seven uh, cows. Uh, uh, so once I was told by your president, uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, so that we have heard many um, crazy ideas from you scientists but the, the uh, so and uh, of course the issue of um, uh, food products so the uh, population demography also uh, 
was changing uh, in North Caucasus, in South Caucasus, so, uh, and peasants uh, got into possession of military arm and they were rebelling against their um, um, their uh, princes and uh, so there was no feudals uh, in North Caucasus and Russians uh, couldn't find uh, some uh, local uh, rulers to negotiate with them and to make an agreement with them. And in 16th century, you will see that India, uh, Spain, Japan, and uh, uh, other countries. And in 19th century, if you look at this, so Spain lost everything. So Turkey was uh, kind of sick. Uh, India became a colony, uh, China was a semi-colony, and there was only two uh, empires uh, uh, pr were preserved, and uh, they were not compared. Uh, quite often they were not compared. Uh, China, uh, Russia and Japan. And uh, uh, so Japan decided to uh, mm, uh, import some of the military equipment from Russia and they decide came up with the uh, uh, with the plan how to uh, uh, become more military uh, equipped and the first thing they had to do they had to uh, destroy old elites within their countries of course and in um, uh, 60th century uh, in Russia uh, Ivan the uh, first decided to uh, um, destroy all the old elite uh, Peter the first uh, started to destroy Strelzi uh, shooters uh, and he started to transform his military towards European uh, more Dutch uh, military type and if you look at the banners and the flags of uh, modern Russian military and navy you can see that these flags and banners are copied from Netherlands and even in communists. If you look at the uh, architectural buildings and if you look at the uh, former build or current building of uh, uh, Gostuma, uh, you can see that this is a copy of um, uh, Chicago the stock exchange and uh, Bolsheviks were in love with uh, United States industry models and they were uh, fans of uh, uh, US uh, tractors and combines and uh, it needed vast fields and all this equipment was invented and invented in the United States, and uh, the wife of uh, our chairman recommends very highly uh, one uh, very tasty book about Mikayan and Soviet Opshipit, like uh, uh, the m m minister Narkom, uh, people's commissar. He was unofficially called, so like a... Uh, number one feeder when he came with to Stalin with uh, several pieces of soap and he said that this is the soap uh, we have to produce so we need to smell this uh, soap and uh, they had to call another minister Molotov and they had to smell all the soaps and uh, came out came up with the soap which will be produced massively so and then Mikoyan was sent to United States how to uh, utilize all this machinery and how to feed all this uh, vast uh, uh, number of uh, people and um, uh, there is a still um, um, some uh, plants and uh, canned meat products uh, 
uh, plant uh, which is named against Mikoyan and Mikoyan, we brought uh, s different sorts of um, uh, food stuff or food recipes from United States, like mayonnaise, even ice cream, and all this Mikoyan was in charge of all this coordination. And one uh, very creative American came up with the recipe how to uh, uh, blend champagne in a very um, uh, short period of time. So. Uh, so, but this was not enough uh, to uh, be to have based uh, your economy. So, but there was a huge, vast um, uh, peasants uh, class, and each uh, landowner, each um, uh, had uh, in possession of thousands of. Uh, uh, peasants. So my friend Bushner uh, uh, just came up with the figure that uh, R Russia's army uh, was uh, had an army uh, with constant number of millions of servi uh, servicemen, military. So. Um, so that increased the number of, of course, uh, the death toll was increasing in 18th century, and there were lots of widows, uh, and but that uh, allowed Russia to um, expand their um, influence. They wanted to go to India. They go. Uh, they went there through Caucasus, and and of course, Great Britain didn't want the Russians to walk towards India, and and they didn't really know what was Afghanistan and what was uh, Pakistan, and Russians had to go through uh, go past Afghanistan and Pakistan, and 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 there was a, a kind of civil war to restrain Russians on the South Front. And on that, uh, in that empire, revolution was upcoming. Everyone was underst everyone understood that revolution would be coming. And all rebellion movement, and up to 1860s, their proles came to play as a class proletariat, and Robert Allen, economic historian from Oxford University, who uh, dedicated the uh, first 30 years of his work uh, to uh, British Industrial Revolution. And after that 30 years, he uh, started to learn Russian language and what happened to uh, in Russian and what could have happened in Russia if Stolypin's reform were to happen. And he came up with the idea that uh, Russia would look like India in 1860, and uh, a big villages uh, starving, that uh, peasants go to uh, cities and Cheap labor goes to uh, urban areas, decreasing uh, wages. And why do we have to uh, decrease uh, uh, wages when we can, uh, um, you know, uh, collect this the same amount money from peasants and then go to the uh, uh, South France and live a uh, nice life. And Russia was finding itself in a uh, vicious circle of dependence, and Bolsheviks decided this, uh, found this uh, solution by terroristic activity. And um, uh, there was a, a leader from Caucasus, a terrorist who came to power, terrorist, and uh, Stalin. And there was another terrorist, Trotsky, and there were um, 
they were uh, the benefit of Stalin was he ne he had never been abroad before, and I can't hear another speakers. Uh, so Stalin was a man of local. He was a local man. Uh, it's a bit uh, scary to to imagine what was it like. Uh, it could have been uh, difficult to find um, alternative, maybe. But they had to do some repression against peasants in different forms, and they could have been some other less repressive measures that they could have used. Mm, but the Chinese uh, like peasants were like uh, uh, guerrillas, so uh, which was not the case in uh, Russia and uh, Bolsheviks were all terrorists. Uh, they were used to spying and they were used to conspiracy theories and they were merciless killers and they. They transferred all these um, skills that they acquired uh, during the revolutionary period, and they they transferred to this to the in economic development. And my friend David Woodward, who uh, teaches in um, London School of Economics, and the NEP in twenty new economic policy in twenties. Uh, Bolsheviks um, used this, and uh, it worked. Uh, and by what, what, what actually uh, killed the NAP? So peasants just refused to sell products to this uh, uh, sellers or to these commie voyagers or. So, and the uh, uh, inflation rate was uh, the biggest uh, impediment towards uh, uh, the process of uh, selling goods to, uh, uh, to peasants. And what could have been done? Uh, it could have, um, uh, so it could have been replaced with a repression. 9,000 or 10,000 uh, Peasants were just executed, and and capitalism was saved by uh, uh, social revolution, communist revolution in uh, and in United States Roosevelt came into power, and so and he was. Uh, um, reported that Henry Ford, who was basically fascist by his ideology, he was supporting Mussolini, and uh, Roosevelt was told that Ford was going to sell, uh, was going to sell two lorries or two tracks to uh, Soviet Union uh, for cash and so, and the Russians, uh, uh, Bolsheviks, had no money, of course. They were starting uh, selling out all these uh, masterpieces. Uh, 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 two tractor plants uh, uh, were constructed, uh, Stalingrad, Volgograd, and uh, uh, other plants, and they, uh, these plants, uh, could be converted into plants producing tanks. They could not produce uh, automobiles, but, and Roosevelt said, uh, I don't care about tanks produced in Siberia. They couldn't get on uh, United States soil, but they could get on Germany soil. So this was the, um, uh, the uh, great American assistance was uh, provided to Soviet Union, and no one was, uh, no party was really. Um, so, uh, if we can uh, wrap up, uh, and because others are. 
So let me tell you how Soviet Union collapsed. And the problem was that every empire which is not, which is every uh, a victory, victorious, they cannot change. And economists often say that we need right political program, right political or economic measures. Easterly book, for example, how reforms failed in Africa uh, and how IMF failed to. Uh, so it looks like uh, we got a picture that IMF uh, uh, experts are a bunch of idiots that they've always failed, but that's not the case. So the, the economy of Soviet Union was created for mass tank battles. So it was uh, directed uh, central, uh, centrally from uh, ministries and uh, Khrushchev uh, attempted to um, destroyed this uh, centralized system and he attempted to introduce sovnarchosis from uh, to uh, find a way out from military situation constant military situation that they were so two attempts from uh, of Gorbachev uh, 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 Germany and France they were in Japan, they were under very close ally to United States and uh, they, they uh, so all, they all wanted to come to uh, Russian market or Soviet market and, and they really wanted to get access and and of course there were some preconditions and uh, like Baltic republics uh, could be exchanged, and even Georgia and we, everyone could be traded. That, like, um, as uh, geopolitical um, access from uh, uh, based on Berlin, Moscow, Tokyo. Uh, this is more important than other. Uh, so. Uh, when Gorbachev needed to um, combine repression with uh, um, libertarian uh, measures, so he tried to use utilize some repressions in Tbilisi, for example, but he didn't he didn't have uh, enough resources, and uh, people like Shevardnadze, Kuchma, and other leaders they. Um, uh, they realized that Moscow is turning back towards them, and they the only uh, choice they had left, they had to become independent, and they uh, uh, had to utilize uh, all these uh, uh, um, democratic uh, values. Uh, if yesterday I was uh, a first secretary of Communist Party in Turkmenistan, today I can become, under the new rules, a uh, uh, Turkmen Bashi or president. So, uh, so there was a, a ministry of uh, three ministry uh, uh, combined in one ministry of. Uh, oil and gas production and now it be, it's it's Gazprom and all the money that um, was left uh, where did they go so all this money was used to uh, buy luxurious houses uh, and to support all speculative um, trades on Western financial uh, trade markets, so I had an article uh, in Georgia, so so I was comparing Putin and Saakashvili when, so they, are, they looked like twin brothers, they both uh, rebuilders, and Putin was trying to rebuild the empire, and Saakashvili had an excellent skill of uh, getting um, grants and filing application for financial assistance and so we have to think about what would be the uh, ways out of this situation.